uh, Alan Simpson, uh, the former uh, co-chair of the Debt Commission, the former senator from the beautiful state of Wyoming, with us right now. Uh, senator, first off, it's always good having you. Thank you. Uh, it, what do you make yeah. of the tax cut push? What do you think of that? Are you for that? Do you think we need tax cuts? Well, Erskine Bowles and I suggested that, and I could come down from my guru temple high on the mountains here in Wyoming and give some tremendous answer. But let me tell you, you can't get a tax cut that's revenue neutral. Uh, there isn't anything there. We set out a 60-page report in English using phrases like going broke and shared sacrifice. Everybody ran for the hills, pulled up their socks, ran for blocks. And you can't you can't get it, and, and whatever they're planning right now is costing billions, and yet they're on the right track to reduce the corporate tax. That's the biggest one in the world. If you can do something and get in there and do something with the big stuff, then when these politicians get on their hind legs and say, we can do this without touching precious Medicare, precious Medicare, precious defense, and precious Social Security, get on your hind legs and say they're doing a terminological inexactitude and nail them because you can't get there without playing with the biggest stuff. And that's, they're, they're not playing with 25% of the American budget fiddling around with the tax code. And, and you're never going to get that. You've got 180 tax expenditures. Every one of those has a building in Washington. I see the, the one on state and federal taxes, a deduction. Try the others, home mortgage interest deduction, for God's sake, uh, municipal bond interest, uh, charitable contributions, uh, you know, you name it, parking for employees. Yeah, I, employers, I, don't, uh, I don't know what's going to be left in there uh, or, or what deductions would be taken away because for even the one for state and local taxes, uh, that would that look like a brave move, but obviously it's causing enough dust up that it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So you're not in the camp center that says uh, dynamic accounting or whatever they call it, that the revenues are created from tax cuts go a long way to paying for them. You don't buy that. We have a name for dynamic uh, systems like that out here, and it's a family show. This is so a family show. Just, exactly. Just there you nuts. go. That's a family that, show. Who, All right, so you don't buy it, but, but was, what, what was happens? Then what happens? Gimmick. They're just looking for gimmicks. All right, so to, what to happens if they're not going to address entitlements? They're not going to address entitlements. They're not going to address defense. They keep uh -huh. that and, and no. growing, all of the above. And they want tax cuts. It sounds to me like we have a good potential to see this debt get really out of control if it isn't already. Well, it is, Neil. And, and, and then add the things that are so appropriate and humane. Uh, you know, $5.5 billion here for the hurricane, uh, $10 billion here, uh, Puerto Rico. Nobody's keeping. There's nothing talk, talking about pay as you go. All those things add to the debt. The deficit, if they could clear their minds and know that the damn deficit is not the same as the debt. The deficit may go right. up and down depending on revenue, depending on this. The debt is on automatic pilot and is not being touched. And the interest on that baby is about a $240, 50000000000 And as it's headed where it's going to be, it's going to be about $750 billion. And that's for the guys who loan us the money to do things for their education, their infrastructure. Well, we're just drawing a blank. You know, for years that we've had this, Alan, the argument has always been, well, it hasn't exploded. Under Democrat or Republican presidents, it hasn't exploded. And we have this sort of cocky view with, like, whistling past the graveyard. What would it take for it to uptick severely? I mean, just a nominal uptick in rates could, could add hundreds of billions. I mean, uh, so what's your biggest fear? Well, in the commission, uh, Dick Durbin, of Illinois, he's not of my faith, but he kept asking the question, where is the tipping point? And the tipping point is very simple. It's when the people then, who we owe 21 trillion bucks, say, we want more money for our money, you have a dysfunctional government, you're addicted to debt, and we want more, and then inflation will kick up, interest rates will go up, I mean, it's not going to stay at two or one and a half or three. It's going to go to historical places like five. And when it does, just a hop like that, I mean, that just rubs out. I'm not telling you who gets it in the shorts, the little guy. That's who gets it. Could you imagine if we ever got back to an 80s phenomenon, early 80s, and we had, you know, double-digit rates? Yeah, well, I remember when I started uh, I came in uh, under Jimmy Carter. I enjoyed him and worked with him as president. I think interest rates were 22%. Right? Remember that?
Could you imagine what that would do to the debt? We all so you're not optimistic. Uh, well, I join you on that. But you're not optimistic with what you've seen thus far. No, no. It's all gimmicks. I mean, as long as they use gimmicks and dynamic things and this and that and, and uh, yeah. rate of growth and 3% or 4% uh, CDP, I mean, it's just, it's just a big, they're just throwing a big shovel full at us all.